I was rolling along, racing in a full marathon in my wheelchair, when I accidentally stumbled into a philosophical dilemma. Hmm, that must be what the gunky stuff on the road is. Allow me to set the scene. Most of the 26-mile marathon was on public roads. Wheelchairs tend to be low to the ground and harder to see than a regular runner. Cars tend to be good at hitting things that are low to the ground and hard to see. Not wanting to lose any more limbs, when my martial arts sensei offered to ride along beside me on a bike, I gladly accepted. Being higher up off the ground, her role was to shout at cars, in that British accent of hers, and tell oblivious drivers to shove off. Turns out that she's also good at hollering at other runners to get out of the way. Watch out! Though they aren't very good at listening. Can't hear ya. Most have earbuds in and so miss the entertainment of listening to an annoyed Brit. You can do it. I can. No, not you. Oh. <laughs> anyway, whilst traversing the peaceful countryside with the occasional British outburst, Sensei spotted a friend of hers out watching the marathon, leaving me to fend for myself. I'm not nearly as good at shouting at people to shove off. Sensei pulled over to say top of the morning to her friend. As fate would have it, just as I passed in front of Sensei's friend, a runner came up alongside me and uttered some fateful words. You're so inspirational. I replied something along the lines of You too. And went about my day. But behind me, Sensei's friend was enraged. How dare an able-bodied runner tell a disabled person, in no wheelchair nonetheless, that she's an inspiration. That's so ableist, not to mention condescending. This lady, who I've never actually met, was highly insulted and offended on my behalf. Following this outburst, Sensei bid Chirio to her friend, engage the throttle on the e-bike, and caught up with me. For the next mile, I got a full recounting of the conversation. It actually takes exception to a lot of things. She says it's condescending. I said I don't think you minded. <laughs> My response? Wait a minute. Your friend doesn't think I can decide for myself whether or not to be offended? That seems kind of ableist. I found the paradox highly amusing. Sidestepping the philosophical question of whether or not it's insulting for a stranger to be insulted on my disabled behalf, or whether disabled people can decide for themselves whether or not they're insulted without having an able-bodied person tell them they are, let's focus on the core question. Is it cool or uncool to call a disabled person inspirational? Way to go. When I think of people that I consider to be inspirational, the defining trait is that they make me want to be a better person or to do better at a specific activity. That's a good thing, right? Yet various amputee YouTubers have said they don't like being called inspirational, particularly when they're just doing mundane things, like grocery shopping. Admittedly, I've also sometimes joked that regardless of what I do, now that I'm an amputee, someone out there will find it inspirational. Did you see that amputee fetch your own mail from the mailbox? That's so inspirational. To paraphrase, it feels like if you're a disabled person living a somewhat normal life, you automatically earn the inspirational label, even when the person giving the compliment knows nothing about the disabled person and what challenges they've actually faced or overcome. Being called inspirational can also make a person feel pressured to do things to impress and inspire able-bodied people. Worse, for some disabled people, it can feel like a form of othering because it labels them as being different, even though the comment was meant in a complimentary way. If we look at the word literally, being an inspiration motivates people to action. If you see me at the grocery store and say I'm inspirational, what exactly am I inspiring you to do? Buy clearance protein bars or a shark-shaped stocking? In which case, my work here is finished. Calling someone inspirational makes more sense in the context of a marathon, where the runner and I were doing the same thing. Maybe he was having a hard time going on and saw little old me still going, which gave him motivation to keep running, and so literal inspiration may have taken place. Or more likely, I suspect it was just his way of trying to say something positive that acknowledged the challenges I was facing in order to race alongside him. In the midst of our overanalyzing, let's not overlook the possibility that complimenting a disabled person by calling them inspirational might make him or her feel good. 
like someone finally sees them and recognizes what they're doing. That's how my disabled daughter feels. She loves being called inspirational. Believe it or not, even disabled people are individuals. We don't share a brain. It's not like we took a vote and decided whether we're unanimously for or against the word inspirational. I've been mulling over this inspirational amputee issue for a couple years, long before this runner came jogging along. I can see why some disabled people dislike being called inspirational. And if I'm perfectly honest, I never know what to say when someone calls me inspirational. For me, accepting compliments is definitely harder than accepting criticism. I don't feel comfortable being put up on a pedestal. Being on one foot and all, I'm liable to fall off. Humor is a coping mechanism. But if I can take my awkwardness out of the picture and just pretend it was a generic amputee who was called inspirational, I'm a lot less averse because I see the positive intent. If someone actually does feel motivated to be better or do something good, or if disability awareness is improved, then that's obviously a good thing. The race drew to an end. I crossed the finish line. As the medal was placed around my neck, I felt hyper aware of how it might look inspirational. Assuming it's even possible for a tired, sweaty, sore Stefanina to look remotely like someone to emulate. I have my doubts, yet I couldn't help wondering how many onlookers were murmuring inspirational under their breaths, more because of the wheelchair than because of me. To be perfectly transparent, after my first marathon in 2021, the director of the race had reached out to me, inviting me to come back. I think we both liked the inherent diversity and disability awareness of having a wheelchair racer present. I was already planning on racing again, so I was happy to oblige. But at the end of the race, I found myself pondering the difference between increasing disability awareness by doing things in public versus being called inspirational. I don't know how the majority of disabled people feel about this topic. We still haven't had that vote yet. I bet able-bodied viewers would appreciate hearing what you have to say. So if you're disabled, please tell me in the comments how you feel. I really want to know. Does being called inspirational make you feel good or does it bother you? Or are you like me and feel kind of neutral, like it's sometimes awkward, but you appreciate the kind intent? If enough of you leave comments, I'd like to make a follow-up video exploring your insights. When I did the marathon, I wasn't trying to be inspirational. I was just going about life, doing something I enjoyed with the added benefit of spreading disability awareness. I was athletically inclined before amputation, and since I'm still me, it makes sense that I'd explore adaptive sports post-amputation. I think that's important. As disabled people, we don't need to feel pressured into doing things simply for the sake of being an inspiration to able-bodied people or even the disabled community. I find I'm happiest when I stop worrying about other people's perceptions of me and instead focus on doing things that simply make me happy and that make the world around me a better place. And that's precisely what I was doing by participating in a marathon. I'm Stephanie. Thank you for joining me on my journey.